Okay, this is line 17T. Um, this is actually a continuation of line 17E. And I remember back when I told you that the videos were getting quite long. And I divided this one up. Now this is the funny part. I divided this up to get it from E because it was too big. And then I did more research from the data. And I got five more videos just from this line of data. So, yeah, it's, it's a big one. Like I said, part 17 is quite extensive. So this is part 98. This one's going to be line 17T, build alien UFO engine, Maya, while WOW study instruction ideas. This is the line 17 of the WOW study alien radio signal that we got in 1977. The math equation from the WOW theory is um, 14, 1, 1, 13, 2, and 1. And I'm assuming a lot of you are going to be interested in this video because of what it says. So I'm just going to show you, the, this is the original WOW signal that was sent. This is called binary data. And this number here, 60QUJ5, was the alien signal. J.R. Airman wrote the word WOW beside his data. He was a, worked at the SETI Institute as a, a volunteer. And basically it became famous because it was the first piece of alien transmission that we had ever received in, back in 1970s. Okay. So here's the UFO engine components to test from this section. Neutrinos and relativistic jet particles and beaming. Sorry, I got these little black bugs bugging me and I gotta smack them because they're getting in my face. Okay, Janu January 21st, 2012. 8.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't want to get hiccups. Sorry. I just ate my lunch. I shouldn't have. Oh, wait. Sorry. My thoughts continued from line 17E. This was originally part of line 17E. And then I kept searching things on Google and got loads more data coming up. So I've added line 17T instead of line 17E2. Less confusing that way. It's going to be a long one. January 21st, 2012, 7.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm no physicist. I just had an idea come to mind, and I don't know if you will think it possible or plausible, but that's what's so much fun here. I know nothing, so if I come up with something, then obviously the Maya are sharing their alien technology with us, right? That's the way I see it. So what would happen with the above graph, Y plus E, and then the bracket of x to the power, sorry, I don't know how to write it out yet, I'll learn, wink. Make x a neutrino to the power of e, which is thermal radiation relativistic jet, y velocity. Okay, hold on. You know what? We're kind of lost here because we didn't. Let's go back to 15e to see this uh, actual calculation here. <laughs> it's not there. Of course not. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I know it was one of the functions. Where is it? Sorry. X ray emissions from entered blocks at radios, D2. Maybe I put it in D2. Uh, nope. Hmm. E? Not good. Okay, so unfortunately, I seem to have lost the calculation that goes with these notes. This is what you get when you pull your notes apart, right? Okay. Sorry about that. If I find it later, I'll let you know, okay? And uh, we'll go back to this one. Uh, no. I hate it when it goes to the bottom here. Okay, sorry about that. I'm lost in La La Land here. Okay, so it says make X a neutrino to the power of E, which is the thermal radiation relativistic jet, Y equals velocity. E equals thermal radiation as seen in relativistic jet particles, powder, powered particles found in black holes. Just some thoughts, not sure if that's possible. You've got to try it and see. I'm, I believe it's a calculation that came up with um, when they're looking at the relativistic jet with the um, black holes. So don't theorize anything. From what I can see, technology and knowledge change from the results of out-of-the-box experiments that men and women come up with over the centuries. If we can get the neutrino to travel faster than the speed of light from CERN to San Grasso using OPERA, then we should be able to build a UFO engine that does the exact same thing. 
Maybe the universe's message from this neutrino CERN opera result was so that you would know that you can scientifically do it. So, sure, it's not perfected, but hey, it's only been a few months since you started testing. I'm sure as you go along, I read that the second test results did better with shorter pulses. Another thought here, we had short pulses come up on here with neutrinos. Gotta look for a second. And this Wow SETI alien video series is the means to pull all the data from each video and put it together to see what you come up with. You need to build a computer program that has all these mathematical equations in them. Then try the different components and let the computer do all the work. Results should be shown in numerical logarithms, graphs, and charts for studying and reporting. Not only should you use well-educated men and women, you should invite your newest students to join in with the data and see if they can add something of value to it. My thoughts continued. Using an ultra-high energy beam of atoms or electrons from your particle beam weapon. Create an impact of a high energy particle beam on the neutrino particles, adding the thermal distribution fu function. And this is where I found it with data to read. This data came up. It said a particle beam weapon uses an ultra high energy beam of atoms or electrons, i.e. a particle beam to damage a material target by hitting it and thus disrupting. Okay, this stands out from the data. A relativistic plasma with a thermal distribution function has temperatures greater than around 260 keV or 3.0 JK, which is 5.5 billion degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. I mean, that's hotter than hot, right? Where approximately 10% of the electrons have Y greater than 2. So I did another Google search on relativistic plasma's high temperature velocity. Um, relativistic plasmas in physics are plasmas for which the relativistic corrections to a particle's mass and velocity are important. I do know that we this came up earlier uh, when we were looking at the black holes in E, but I brought it up to here just to like put the two together because it, it is very important. Okay, Such corrections typically become important when a significant number of electrons reach greater than 0 0.86 Lorentz factor Y equals 2. Such plasmas may be created either by heating a gas to a very high temperature or by the impact of a high energy particle beam. A relativistic plasma with a thermal distribution function has temperatures greater than around 260 keV or 3.0 GK, 5.5 billion degrees Fahrenheit, where approximately 10% of the electrons have Y uh, greater than 2. Since these temperatures are so high, most relativistic plasmas are small and brief and are often the result of a relativistic beam impacting some target. More mundanely, relativistic plasma might denote a normal cold plasma moving at a significant fraction of the speed of the light relative to the observer. Relativistic plasmas may result when two particle beams collide at speeds comparable to the speed of light and in the cores of supernovae. Plasmas hot enough for particles other than electrons to be relativistic are even more rare since other particles are more massive and thus require more energy to accelerate to a significant fraction of the speed of light. So basically um, what this is all talking about is how to get faster speeds of light and how, these, how they use these particles to get these faster speeds of light. Okay? Still higher energies are necessary to achieve a quark gluon plasma. The primary changes in a plasma's behavior as it approaches the relativistic regime is slight modifications to the equations which describe a non-relativistic plasma and to collision and interaction cross-sections. The equations may also need modifications to account for pair production of electron positron pairs or other particles at the highest temperatures. A plasma double layer with a large potential drop in layer separation may accelerate electrons to relativistic velocities and produce syn synchrotron radiation. Okay, so January 21st, 2012, 7.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, my thoughts. Doing some research on relativistic jets to see what particles are in them. Quote, relativistic jets are extremely powerful jets of plasma which emerge from presumed massive objects at the center of some active galaxies, notably radio galaxies and quasars. Their lengths can reach several thousand or even hundreds of thousands of light years. Their lengths can reach several thousand or even hundreds of thousands of light years. 
So what if you can travel along these lengths of light at maximum speed would allow you to transfer from one side of the universe to another side in record time? That's my question. Quote, relativistic beaming, also known as Doppler beaming or the headlight effect, is the process by which relativistic effects modify the apparent luminosity of emitting matter that is moving at speeds close to the speed of light. Question. What relativistic effects are happening to the matter to make it move close to the speed of light? Create the same effect of matter in a UFO engine to make it travel faster than the speed of light. Quote, in an astronomical context, relativistic beaming commonly occurs in two oppositely directed relativistic jets of plasma that originate from a central compact object that is accrediting matter. Accrediting compact objects and relativistic jets are invoked to explain the following observed phenomena. X-ray binaries, gamma ray bursts, and on a much larger scale, active galactic nuclei, AGN. Quasars are also associated with an accrediting compact object, but are thought to be merely a variety of AGN. And that's under relativistic beaming on Wiki. You have done a test Okay, so this, this is my thoughts continued. Okay, I'm talking to the physicists that have been working on these neutrinos. You have done a test where you take particles from the center and have them go in two different directions. That was the testing done at CERN and the OPERA test, right? Did you do this with the neutrino? Protons, atoms, and particles mixed in with this? What happens? My thoughts continued. At CERN, the neutrinos left a slower tail from what I gathered in the blogger's notes on the subject. So you need to find a way to bring that tail in accordance with the actual neutrino particle so there is no dragging from the matter, friction or heating up of the particle. I don't think this particle heats up based on what I've read, but I don't quote me on that. I could have it mixed up with something else. The neutrino's element allows it to pass through anything. Nothing can hold it back. The idea is you need to build... You need something to power it from behind, a compression as a gas to build longevity. And that's my question for that one. Okay, so that's the end of that one. And we're going to go on to 17 T2 next.